Hey everyone, um, today we're going to learn about mitosis, meiosis, and chromosomes. So before we start all that, uh, and I have a cool little diagram for that, I want to get some important vocabulary clarified. So first thing we're going to talk about is what is a chromatid? Now think of a chromatid as the smallest unit of whole DNA content per a whole cell. Uh, that's exactly one copy of the whole genome. So think one chromatid, one copy of the whole genome. In my notes, this is how we're going to represent it. Now you see that it's like half of the typical X that you always see. And it's just one copy of, the, of all the DNA. So look over here how there's uh, one allele on that, the capital A. And we're going to compare that to a chromosome. Now, a chromosome is different than a chromatid. You might think that a, cro a chromatid is something of a definition for a physical thing that exists. A chromosome is more defined as this abstract idea of information content. So, think of a chromosome as it can be made up of one chromatid or two chromatids. I know that's weird and we'll talk about that. So it's one chromatid before S phase, two chromatids after S phase. And here we have a diagram for that where you're seeing that S phase duplicates the number of chromatids. But still, this is just one chromosome. So a chromosome is organization of, inform of information. There's no opportunity for that side of the chrome, this and like the pair that happen after S phase to be anything but identical because S phase replicates DNA identically. So the point is, there's a capital A there. You're never going to see a capital A and a lowercase a on the same chromosome. That's only a case between homologous chromosomes. So homologous chromosome means a pair of two chromosomes. So again, think about a chromosome that it can be one chromatid or two chromatids, but it's an organization of information. I hope that makes sense. Homologous pair has the opportunity for the very first time to be either homo homozygous or heterozygous. So it wouldn't make sense to classify that X up there as homozygous, even though it might look like it. It's not homozygous because this is faithful DNA replication. Over here, you see like a chrom one chromosome, I mean, sorry, I, I'm sorry, it's a pair of, of two chromosomes. So one chromosome there, one chromosome there, and you notice that they're different chromosomes because that one's a big A, that one's a little a. Okay, so they're different. Also, you need to know that there will be some cases where you'll see uh, capital A, capital A on a pair of homologous chromosomes. That's called homozygosity, and we've talked about that before. Um, the point is that they have the opportunity to be different, and by they I mean homologous chromosomes have the opportunity to be different at a given locus. And then here we see what happens before S phase where a pair of homologous chromosomes has two chromatids. But then S phase happens, the number of chromatids doubles. So now you have one, two, so one, two, three, four chromatids but only two chromosomes, and still just one pair of homologous chromosomes. Remember, S phase copies number of chromatids, but not number of chromosomes. I hope that's clear. The last thing I'm gonna, last uh, vocabulary is gonna be ploidy. Ploidy is just, uh, you can ask yourself the question of, is a cell considered 2N or 1N? and look for the number of homologous chromosomes present. If there's a pair of homologous chromosomes, and again, you know, that's back here, so if you're seeing this case, whether capital or lowercase, case, or they're both uh, homozygous, either way, it's two different chromosomes, then uh, you have a 2N uh, ploidy. However, if there's only one chromosome, so that's only in gametes, so this will be in gametes, and this is going to be in every other cell. Every other cell is 2N. I mean, at, at least for your most organisms. Other organisms might be 4N or some crazy stuff. That happens. We won't get into that. Just keep it simple in your head. 2N means there's a pair of homologous chromosomes present. 1N means there is no pair. Okay, so now let's talk about... Um, 
this whole thing visually. Okay, so let's say you start out with this cell, and uh, I'm gonna even cover everything else so you guys have my attention. <laughs> so that's a cell, right? It has a pair of homologous chromosomes. Why? Because there's one trait that's dominant, one that's recessive, or it, it could be dominant, dominant, or recessive, recessive. But the point is there's the opportunity to be two different things. Now that is a pair of homologous chromosomes. There's two chromatids. That chromatid is a physical thing. You got wheat again. And it's two employee. So during S phase, I had talked about how uh, the number of chromatids doubles, but the p number of chromosomes does not. And the ploidy does not change during S phase. So you see S phase here, and what copied is that number of chromatids? Num chromosomes is still the same. You still have uh, one pair of homologous chromosomes, so that's two chromosomes. The, two, the ploidy is the same, but the chromatids have doubled in S phase. Then we're going to go mitosis. Look at what happens there. Um, I'm going to move the camera over. Okay, look at mitosis. So you've generate, you've essentially cut this cell right down the middle, like like that. Uh, during during telophase, point is all of mitosis summarized uh, gives you this right here, where you have um, one pair of homologous chromosomes. And notice because of uh, the law of independent assortment, so that's Mendel's second law that that left chromatid didn't move with the left chromatid over here. They could have, but the point is that either the left or the right hand chromatid could have moved over. But you still see that you got one blue and one red copy in this cell right here. So that's the end product of mitosis. That 2N stays the same because the same, you have either the blue or the red. You have both of them. Um, you still have a pair of homologous chromosomes and two chromatids, and then that applies to this one and then this one. Same thing, and they're also the same as here. So you know how mitosis makes uh, diploid cells? If you were just doing mitosis, we would stop here because this is effectively the same as that. Now this is meiosis over here. If you want to get technical, I guess meiosis would be from here to there and then that. So meiosis is this plus that. But the point is, meiosis ends up over here, where you've actually, for the first time, split up the blue from the red. You'll notice that the blue, there's always a blue and a red here, 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 here. For the first time, the blue and the red are split up. Now that's the splitting up of homologous chromosomes. Now, now you actually have one chromosome here and one chromosome here. And then uh, notice that that's also one chromatid per uh, gamete. So these are your gametes, right? Gamete. Um, and you have one chromatid in that gamete, and the ploidy has finally changed, one N. And remember that question that we asked about what is ploidy? Ploidy means uh, whether or not there's a pair of homologous chromosomes present. In this cell, there's no homologous chromosomes present. It's just that one, that one chromosome. Because there's no pair of homologous chromosomes present, this cell is 1N. And yeah, that's basically it.